On this note, Ya Ikhwan, I would like to mention a story. It's actually a story of my cousin. May Allah guide him. A very beloved person to me was and still is. When we was back in the day before we was practicing, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us to come on this way, obviously we used to indulge in things what was not correct. Him more so than me. And his only dream was to become a millionaire and to be one of the biggest gangsters around. This is what he wanted. And this is what he always used to say. So advising him, advising him, he didn't take heed. But at that particular time, we was all on, we was on the same thing. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took me to Holland and took me to other ways. Alhamdulillah, we split. But he carried on that way. He carried on that way. Years after, after I was in Medina, I met him. And he was in the same hal. Didn't move forward, didn't even move back. Rather move backwards. Because time went and he's still in the same hal. Then he says to me that he just wants to do that last. He wants to do that last job or that last deal. And then inshallah he's out the game. This is what he used to say to me. Then I, then I mentioned to him a story. I said to him, who is by far the biggest and the most powerful of the gangsters that we have today? Of those individuals in the underworld. And he mentioned a few names. Then I said to him, would you not agree that it's Pablo Escobar? Those individuals that are not aware of Pablo Escobar, he's now dead. And he died a disbeliever. Pablo Escobar was from Colombia. And Pablo Escobar was in charge of a huge cartel, a drugs cartel, to such an extent that 80% of the cocaine of the whole dunya that gets distributed to the whole of the world is under Pablo Escobar. He had wealth and power that he even brought out the Mexican government. The Mexican government was under his authority and used to allow his shipments to come into Mexico. And other than that, one phone call, people were getting blown and assassinated on the other side of the world. Colombia caught him once for a short period. And was going to put him in jail. In a jail which he built. A jail which he built. And then he said, if you let me go, I will pay all of the debts off of Colombia. The point I'm trying to get, Ya Ikhwan, you're not going to get bigger than that. A person who's dealing in billions. A person who buys out governments. A person who is protected with such a cartel you can't get near him. That's what we thought. Invincible. And if he ordered, basically, if he ordered for someone's death, it would be carried out just like that. And so much millions that he had. The question is, Ya Ikhwan, he did not even live to see his 60th birthday or 55th birthday. That's one. Secondly, in the mannerism that he died, what, what, what a way to die. He was tracked down, he was living in hiding, and he was tracked down, by the elite squad from America and all of the different nations gathered and, and, and hunted him down and when they finally caught him he was in his underpants and he tried to run and they put 70 bullets into his body 70 bullets ya Ikhwan into his body and he died and they were taking photographs and they were putting their boots upon his head and taking photos and, and um, boasting that verily we have killed Pablo Escobar. My point is, Ya Ikhwan, the youth today are blinded with this thing of making that last money. Oh, making that money in illegal ways. And they keep on having that idea and having that dream. Ya Ikhwan, one is, I don't think anybody will get as big as him. And even if you do get as big as him, what life do you have? When you die in that state, and even worse, you die as a disbeliever. And, why, and then you meet your Lord upon this. So what power, and what joy, and, and what, um, <clears throat> what joy and what power do we call that, Ya Ikhwan? What success is that? There's no success, Ya Ikhwan. Anybody that goes against the Quran and the Sunnah, Ya Ikhwan, will never have no salvation. 
and going back to my cousin after I gave him that story he was saying to me no just one more one more make dua for him ya ikhwan for that individual now is heavily 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 uh, <coughs> addicted to drugs and subhanallah to the extent that he doesn't even recognize people no more and he's uh, <coughs> basically insane now at the moment <coughs> so ya ikhwan there is no salvation in that life if you avoid death because that life can only bring you a few things it either brings you death because if you live by the gun and you live by the streets then face the consequences that comes with it so either you're going to face death either you're going to face a long imprisonment or if you think that you're going to survive all of that then know the humiliation that you're going to face on the day of judgment so just a reminder ya ikhwan do not be fooled by the status of certain individuals when they're going around and pumping this kind of ideology into our youth. Fight, fight them back with the Quran and the Sunnah.